Rich, you mentioned 14 years in Toastmasters. Obviously, you're not needing too much advice on how to organize a speech or how to use vocal variety. What keeps you coming back year after year, probably decade after decade, and staying in Toastmasters? Well, I do still learn a lot because you're always getting an influx of people into Toastmasters and each of them provides an individual perspective. I love getting evaluated by brand new members because those are the people you speak to in the real world, people who've typically not had Toastmasters experience and so they're able to give me a perspective that I'll get outside of my Toastmasters club at least for those first six months before they become indoctrinated in the Toastmasters way. So I still learn a lot just by going to my club. But I wouldn't be a coach or a speaker had I not gotten into Toastmasters. I had no inclination to do either of these things, uh, coming out of college or being a salesperson. Toastmasters helped me find the passion uh, that is speaking and coaching, gave me the confidence and the tools I needed to do it, and helped me find all the other places I needed to go to get information beyond Toastmasters. So there is a certain amount of giving back that I feel they deserve. Toastmasters as a whole deserves for me to stay in and give back as much as I've gotten over the years. And of course, there's always that trophy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When talking about evaluations, we certainly have a situation where newer members are timid and intimidated and saying, what do I have to offer? You mentioned you love being evaluated by new members. How do that's a point I think we all need to think about of saying accomplished, competent, confident speakers want to hear from people who might feel they're not as accomplished. That's a really good point. So we have the issue where new members are sometimes intimidated or timid to evaluate people they think speak better than that. When you do a speech, you get a written and oral evaluation and how do you overcome that? Do you find people saying, oh, I can't evaluate Rich Hopkins when you know that it's valuable? How do we convince members to go ahead and evaluate someone better than them? And one more thing, what do you tell evaluators? We hear them say, there's nothing I can improve. When someone loves your speech, what feedback do you want from them, even though they can't help you make it better in their mind? To answer the first part of the question, Here's a, a funny thought for a communication organization. Go talk to them. I go talk to my evaluator and say, hey, I am thrilled that you're going to evaluate me. And they might say something about how they're a little bit freaked out about having to evaluate me. And that's when I give them permission to evaluate me. And we should all do that. No matter what our skill levels are, go to our evaluator and communicate with them as to what we're hoping to get from them. What are our goals within the book and outside of the book that we're working on so that our evaluator has something to work with instead of just trying to come up with it out of whole cloth for themselves? Uh, when, what was the second part? The second part was when you give a speech and it, when, if the evaluator is just saying, that was perfect, I want all my speeches to be like that, and they can't give you suggestions, what do, you, what, what do we tell an evaluator say, well, here's what you can provide back? Oh, usually what I tell them is, can I get that on tape? <laughs> <laughs> I ask them, as part of the communication beforehand, is to give me what they would have done differently themselves. What is their perspective? If they saw one thing that they would like me to try differently, and to come at it not from a critical perspective, but from a creative perspective of what are some different routes I can take. Right. And then if, if they still can't come up with something at that point, tell me why something really did work well for them. Because it's, it's one thing to say it works great, it's another thing to tell me why it works great. The specific feedback, even if it's all positive, uh, is helpful. And I like that idea of saying no critique, but instead creativity. That's a great philosophy of evaluation. We have another, we have a caller with a question? No, it's me. It's Vicki. Okay, we have a question you. from Vicki. So you've attended our di district conference, uh, and we're, we're looking for your feedback. How did you feel our program was? How did you feel our contests 
we're, how, the caliber of our contestants, and, and honestly, tell us where we're at compared to other districts, because you've been to other districts. So we'd be interested, and this is, we're looking for honesty here. And just because it's my house and I might not left, you know, you might be not leave comfortably, <laughs> has nothing I'm to do with kitchen. it. I'm in the kitchen, where are the knives? <laughs> where are the knives? We put them away before you got here. <laughs> if you could just maybe uh, tell us, you know, have you ever seen anything like this? What, what worked? Maybe something else we could have done? We'd be really interested in knowing your assessment. You have two to three minutes to evaluate the District to 60 fall conference. conference. Do we have a green light at <laughs> three minutes? A... Well, the District 60 conference is much bigger than the conferences we have in the state, so at least the ones I've experienced. To, to go two and a half days uh, with it being the full conference, we usually have something small on Friday night and maybe a champ does something Sunday morning that's separate from the conference. But your conference was massive, and yet you still had attendance on all three days. So you marketed it very well. You brought in Randy Harvey, who's a tremendous draw. The karaoke idol that we did on Saturday night seemed to be a tremendous success. And I'd love to see you repeat that in the future, maybe next fall. Take people in the spring and make them all go, oh, I wish we'd had it in the spring and then you bring it back to them in the fall and they're going to be incredibly excited. The quality of the speakers, the, the contestants, you know, and you're big enough that you had eight contestants. I've been part of a district that's small enough that we had eight contestants because we took forward first and second um. to the district. So it was nice to see eight people at the top of their game and all of the speakers in both contests seem to really be on top of things. In a lot of contests you can kind of see well, there's, there's definitely those one or two, and then there's definitely those one or two. <laughs> but here, everybody was above the bar, and it was really difficult, I think, for the judges to decide who they thought really rose to the top. So this district is doing something right.